Welcome to Racing Roots with Ham. This is your first time tuning in. My name is David Ham. I recently retired from NASCAR after 25 years as an inch builder and seven year jackman. Every Monday evening, we have a new guest join us and tell their racing stories and a live Q&A with our listeners. Hit that subscribe and stay tuned. Stick around for the spin the wheel near the end of the show for your chance to win a prize. This episode is brought to you by Jersey Cape Yachts. Jersey Cape Custom Built Yachts. Jersey Attitude with a Carolina Flash. Come out on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, also jerseycapeyachts.com or call 609-965-8650. All right, so I hope you all enjoyed that little intro. It took me a couple of, about five minutes to get it together. (laughs) So I'm going to work on some of the volume switching and such. But tonight my guest is Kevin LePage. How you doing, Kevin? I'm doing great. How yourself, David? Oh man, I'm doing great too. It's good to see you. It's been a, I guess it's been about a year, or maybe two. Let's see. I've been out of NASCAR for a little over, uh, almost two years now. Yeah, it's probably been about two or three years since we've seen each other at the gym. Yes, yes, at the gym at, at Jet Fitness out there with uh, Jenny. But I haven't been to the new gym. I guess she's got a new one, right? She does, right down the street from the old one. But I haven't mm-hmm. been there either. I was going to start uh, just before COVID. And oh, yes. um, then yeah. COVID came in, so I haven't been back yet. Yeah. I mean, I guess uh, I was starting to go to the gym finally, kind of, and then and going in the mornings early since I retired from NASCAR, and then the COVID thing come along, and it's like, okay, yeah, I think I'll take a break. So yeah. That's, <laughs> that's probably smart right now. Yeah. So, uh, but speaking of last times, when when was the last time you went to the, the racetrack driving or race car, NASCAR? Uh, 2014, my last uh, race was Homestead, Florida. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, um, you know, been out of it for six years now. Okay. Yep. My last time going to the racetrack for working was in 2004. So yeah, my last time as a Jackman was 2001, but it's so good to have you in here. But what we would like to hear is your, your story, like when you, how you got started, you know, basically where you grew up and all that, who was your biggest influence, that kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, it, um, I came from a racing family. My dad used to drag race. And uh, my mom used to tell me the story that, uh, you know, I used to cry when uh, he left on a Saturday morning to go to the racetrack. I'd cry all day long because I couldn't go with him. And when, as soon as the car came back to the shop, um, I'd run outside and I'd sit in the seat and, you know, and mm-hmm. uh, till the next week or the next time we went to the racetrack. So as, uh, you know, as our family grew, my dad had to step aside from drag racing and become a, a dad and, and work two jobs. Mm-hmm. and. So uh, one of his uh, businesses he had, he was uh, you know, in a gas station and uh, at the local racetrack, we'd go up and, you know, bring the wrecker up there and, you know, he'd tow the cars off for a wreck or whatever. And mm-hmm. so I started to sneak in uh, into the infield, you know, behind the seat of the wrecker and watch the cars go around. And then one day they caught me because I was a little bit too big, you know. And yeah. uh, so uh, I went to the grandstands and... Um, um, in 1975, my brother uh, started uh, racing, and uh, so, uh, you know, I worked on his car, and, mm-hmm. and uh, I was still, at that time, I was still 14, 15 years old, wasn't old enough to drive, so um, in 1980, he uh, got married, and uh, so my dad said, well, you know what, son, he said, we're going to give you a shot, we'll let you run the, the 35 lappers you know, mm-hmm. at the local racetrack and we'll let uh, Rick drive the, you know, the bigger, you know, hundred lap, 200 lap races. Well, my first event was, um, on, uh, at Catamount stadium in Milton, Vermont. And, uh, it was the third mile asphalt. Um, I won my qualifying event and finished 10th on a feature. And that Sunday, well, the following day, which was a Sunday, my brother got fired and I got put in the car oh, full yeah. time. <laughs> Sounds like you did a good job <laughs> right away. Well, you know, um, yeah. I, I guess, you know, it's like a football player, basketball player, baseball player. I mean, if you're, if you're good at it, you, you know, um, you're going to succeed in it. And, uh, I just paid so much attention to how guys were driving the corners and breaking and everything else. And, I just adapted real quick and, mm-hmm. um, you know, from that point on, uh, you know, the rest is history. Yeah. So how long did you drive there at the, it was Catamount? Catamount. Mm-hmm. Uh, I drove up North, um, till, uh, 1994 when, uh, I moved down here. Um, you know, we raced all over the place up there. Um, um, uh, my dad shut the race team down in 1984. Um, he got divorced and, um, you know, he, he stopped racing. And so I was picked up from a team in Maine for uh, three year, two and a half years. 
uh, on the third season, uh, my main owner picked up a partner, and uh, five races in, they got in a pissing contest, and they split. And mm-hmm. I was out, you know, without a ride. Um, my replacement driver was Ricky Craven. Okay. So, uh, you know, I went back home. Um, I was living in Maine. I went back home to Vermont on weekends to get one of my uh, race cars that my dad had, um, put it back together to go to the racetrack. It took me about five weeks to, you know, get the car ready to go. And my first race out with it, I won. And um, ironically, Ricky Craven didn't qualify that night at the racetrack. So right. it was kind of like a, yes. you know, a lot of, you know, a little gratification. Yes. But uh, Ricky sure. and I are really good friends. And, um, you know, yeah. we race hard together over the years. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, um, it was one of those things that um, in um, 1980, um, 80, let me see now, 1993, uh, Ken Squire came to me and said, um, I think you need to go south. Mm-hmm. And um, I said, really? He goes, yep. He said, you've done everything you can do up here. I think you need to, it's time's right to go down there. So so he was from there too, right? Ken's, Ken's from Waterbury, Vermont. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, he was one of the partners of one of the racetracks I used to race at. Mm-hmm. And uh, his other partner was Tom Curley. And uh, you know, Tom was a big, uh, Tom and Ken were really uh, big influencers on my career. Um, they molded me. They made me a better spokesperson. Uh, they, um, if I did something wrong, they would yell at me, mm-hmm. but it was always in constructive criticism way, you know? Sure. And, uh, they said, look, you know, um, I was playing golf with Tom one day and I said to Tom, I said, uh, out of the drivers you see today, who do you think can make it down South? And Tom says, Craven, LaJoy, McDonald, and LePage. Okay. Well, that's and, a good compliment. Uh, you know, and all four of us came down here, mm, you know, and, yeah. and Randy uh, McDonald got hurt. Um, he didn't have quite the success that, you know, Randy LaJoy or mm. Ricky did, uh, or myself. And um, so 1993, uh, Ken got us uh, some passes down at Rockingham. Mm. So we came down and, you know, believe it or not, back in 1993, they were still looking for, you know, drivers with money and stuff. So I started mm-hmm. walking around the garage area and, I had a team meeting with uh, a new team that was starting up out of Pennsylvania. And uh, we met with them there. And then uh, the following week, I went to Pennsylvania to meet with them again. And it boiled down to it was going to be uh, Mike Stefanik or myself in the car. <laughs> and uh, they felt that Mike had some championships, modified championships that it might be a better sell. So they put Mike in the car. And um, on. I got home from that meeting when they told us, you know, they want to tell us in person who they pick. Uh, Both Mike and I were in the same room. And I said to myself on the way home, I said, you know what? You know, we've owned our own team up here for several years. Why can't we do it down south? Yeah. So we started uh, looking around. We found a team um, out of Asheboro, uh, Jim Bound uh, Racing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, we bought it. We got sponsorship from Vermont Teddy Bear Company in uh, 1994. We moved south. That's the biggest one I remember is the Vermont Teddy Bear. I always remember that. <laughs> it was um, yeah. it was a really <laughs> cool sponsor sure. um, in Richmond the first year in 1994. Um, we were the most visited souvenir trailer out of all the souvenir trailers. Wow, that's cool. And uh, it, it was cool because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we were pissing off people like uh, a guy named Earnhardt yeah. and uh, Wallace and <laughs> Labonte. And, um, but, uh, you know, they were a great sponsor and, and they, uh, they were able to, um, you know, they were the, one of the biggest reasons we made it down here. Yeah, they were a good uh, kid-friendly sponsor, too. They were, yeah. you know, and, and the thing is, is we, you could build your, your own teddy bear. Mm-hmm. You know, there was, um, you could come in and there was multiple colors. Uh, multiple outfits you you know if your daughter was in ballerina we had a ballerina outfit if your yeah. son liked to be a fireman we had a fireman bear you know so mm-hmm. we had so many different uh teddy bears that uh, parents would come on the weekend and and we were i would my wife and i would run it on sundays because mm-hmm. uh, we had volunteers during um they in the bush race on saturday and so we'd stay over and we run it on sunday and to see these people come up and um you know, go through the process of buying a bear and, uh, you know, getting t-shirts and hats and stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, for two years, it was an awesome deal. Yeah. What a a great idea. They, whoever come up with that. 
Well, that was probably the predecessor before Build a Bear. Yeah, yeah pretty mean, much. Because I remember, in, you know, when that sponsor came out, and that all, you're right. That was, mm-hmm. I mean, you could pick any industry: a fireman, policeman, you know, ballerina, mm-hmm. like you said. Yeah, yeah, you know, and and um, what was cool about it is. Um, you know, with me running it on Sunday, you know, people were always there to to uh, talk to me about racing, and, and I think that what that's what my where my fan base started to come because mm-hmm. I was not just a guy who went in and drove a race car and went home. You know, I was yeah. there, you know, working a souvenir trailer, and right. Um, the thing that was interesting about the souvenir business back then, and it may still be today in some aspect. I'm not sure. I don't go to mm-hmm. track, but a lot of racetracks, it would be a lottery draw, so. They would put your name in the hat, and they would pick up, okay, Kevin LePage from Mott Teddy Bear. They're going to go in spot A. You know, next one be Dale Earnhardt Sr. He's going to go in, in lot number two or B or whatever. Okay. Well, <clears throat> one day we got right next to Dale, and we only had a little small 36-foot trailer. We didn't have a big tractor trailer like they did. And our lines were going all the way across the, the midway. Yeah. By Teddy Bear because I was in there signing an autograph. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And cool. Dale was furious <laughs> because people, you know, weren't going and weren't buying his merchandise. You yeah. know, they were over, you know, buying our stuff. And mm-hmm. uh, the, we were sitting at Dover one day and uh, Senior come over and um, always, he always used to call me, you know, Teddy Bear man or yeah. whatever. Sure. Well, he, he come over when I was sitting on the pit wall getting ready to qualify and he comes over and he says, hey, Kevin. I'm like, uh oh, what did I do wrong? Because he's mm. never called me by my first name. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and he goes, hey, he says, you know, my my little daughter Taylor, she likes to um, have tea with her dolls, and I think it'd be cool if we could get a teddy bear. I said, yeah, no problem. I said, do you have a color, you know, whatever? He goes, uh, just pick something out, right? So we go out and qualify, and I scrape the wall coming out of turn two. So the next day, um, I'm on pit road working on the car or watching the guys work on the car. We're putting new decals on it and. Uh, Dale was racing the bush race up there that day and next thing I know I feel this arm around me and it's Dale mm-hmm. he goes you get this thing all back together and I said oh yeah it's just decals you know it's just just a scrape yeah cosmetic and he started walking away him and Teresa started walking away and I said um, hey Dale just a minute so I walked over and I had a teddy bear in the bag mm-hmm. for him nice the look on his face was like you didn't forget me yeah after doing cool. all this stuff and everything and mm-hmm. I said no and uh, from that point on um dale and i became really great friends yeah. and uh, if i ever need anything advice uh stuff for my charity golf tournaments all i had to do was give him a call or, mm-hmm. or stop over and ask, ask him and uh, and he was there for me so yeah. it was good wow very cool yeah. i'm surprised he didn't ask for a a good ranch bear so that you could get some of his fans over there to buy a good ranch well it's <laughs> funny that you said that um we did build one mm-hmm. and um the fall dover race um we had to bear with us and uh, um, Teresa and um, her marketing person was supposed to come over, and they didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, whatever happened, you know, they weren't there or they didn't come meet with us. In October, um, end of October, we got a letter from Vermont Teddy Bear that they were not going to go any further okay. uh, with sponsorship. And in November, uh, last race of the year, um, I get a phone call from uh, Dale's PR person, and they wanted to see the teddy bear, mm-hmm. and um, they were getting ready to, you know, proceed with it. But at that point in time, Vermont yes. Teddy Bear was—they were done. They were—they yeah. were in financial troubles, and they decided at that time, you know, they needed to do something else. But if mm-hmm. timing would have been just two months earlier, right? I mean, yeah. who knows? I think Vermont Teddy Bear would still be in the business. Yeah. I, I could not agree more. It would have yeah. saved them. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, That's what so I was thinking. We're, we're, Where's that prototype bear? <laughs> yeah, right. You got any leftover? <laughs> well, you know, we, we had a bear when we came down, and we named him Racer Ted. And Racer Ted would ride with us all the time. And he okay. was built with my racing suit. And Bill Simpson um, built us a small teddy, uh, small black helmet. Okay. And uh, so people had an opportunity to buy Racer Ted with or without the helmet. Mm-hmm. And uh, believe it or not, we had to go back to Bill several times throughout the two years to get more helmets built because that was probably one of the number one sellers that we ever had. Sure. Yeah, that's great. So, and if y'all don't recognize the voice, it's Phil Cavalli over here, the uh, 
the spokesman for Jersey Cape Yachts. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we kind of made him the spokesperson. So who we got on here with us? Scott Travis is down in Florida. He says, hello from the world's most famous beach, uh, from the beautiful, the world's most famous beach. He's in Daytona area, but he lives over there near uh, Port. No, he, all right. Da, 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 Ponce, da, De Leon Springs. That's where he's at, De Leon Springs. You ever go to Florida much besides uh, Daytona? I just go down for the race. Mm -hmm. uh, used to go down for the race. Um, you know, uh, now, um, you know, I play a lot of golf nowadays, mm -hmm. so uh, don't get a chance to, to travel much. But, uh, um, you know, Daytona is uh, the, the beaches areas down there, uh, Miami. I mean, uh, we used to go down there. We always went down a couple of days ahead of time and, you know, I always loved Speed Weeks because, you know, we were down there early. Yeah. And then we had, you know, two, three days off, you know, where we could travel the area and play a bunch of golf and see a lot of stuff. And, um, you know, miss those days. Yeah, sure. And you, you got to wonder if it'll ever get back to that. I mean, the way things are. Go ahead, Phil. What's up? No, I was just agreeing with him is that that's a part of a bygone era now. With Speed Weeks, we reduced it reduced down from what tuesday to sunday and that's it this year yeah i mean we used to go down here on wednesday you know we had pr stuff to do on thursday and practice friday and you know uh, just a lot yeah. going on and yeah. uh you know and and you know to uh to answer phil's question i don't i don't think you'll see it back yeah. you know mm -hmm. um time you know not that my time wasn't important back then but uh it seems like today's drivers you know um they're not willing to give up two weeks at a time or a right. week at a time, you know, mm -hmm. or three, four days at a time. That's why these, I think these one day races that you've seen, you know, mm -hmm. this past uh, season, 2020, right. I think you'll see that probably will be something that'll stay. Yeah. Yep. They've proved that it can work. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, it worked when we were racing local yeah. racetracks. I mean, we'd go in first thing in the morning, practice and qualify and race that night, you know, so yeah. Uh, yeah. just our races weren't as long. With the, uh, you know, the, multi-million dollar deals being reduced down for sponsorship you don't have those big name big money so you got to cut back not so much to save the industry but to save money across the board for sure. the teams absolutely yeah so uh, scott trevson says vermont legend that's right and uh sam sharp what's up sam dickie dennis he says uh he feels fine and cheers and all that and rachel robbins down in charlotte good evening race fans hello WMQL, that's an online streaming station in Brevard, who usually runs this show as well. And as we mentioned before, Dickie Dennis, the infamous fence climber, do you remember him? I do, I do. Yeah. I've seen this picture on a lot of um, <laughs> a lot of sites. That was actually the last year you raced, too, yeah. right? 2014. Yeah. I don't think he held you up that day, though. No, yeah. no, I was home watching it on TV, mm -hmm. that, that one particular event, because yes. that was the cup race, I believe. It was, yes. Yeah. Uh, Paul Rodriguez is down in Port St. Lucie, Florida. That's kind of what I was going to say earlier, but it was uh, I was trying to remember where Scott was. So let's see. Rachel Rodman, what's up, Rachel? Jake McVie, and uh, I think Don Clark's tuned in as well, and the Troutman family here in Statesville. Linda Jinks, Sissy O'Dell here in uh, Statesville, and Brad Downard. He is up in Ohio. Mike and Bear. Mike, Mike Bear, okay. Yeah. R.D. Ford. Or he's up in Michigan. I it's cold up there right now, I bet you. I'm sure, yes. And uh, Wayne Puglis, Suzette McGuire, and I think that's about it. Kit Rodriguez, also down in Port St. Lucie, Florida. Okay, so whatever happened with your brother? Uh, he just uh, he came back and he ran a couple races um, for my dad after I left. Okay. Uh, just never went any further. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, he started, um, you know, had a family. Um, got a great business up there he's got a big um repair shop and record service uh, i mean tractor trailer stuff so um he's done well and and uh unfortunately for a number of years uh he lived right behind my my dad's house where our race shop was mm -hmm. and so you know when i took over the ride um uh i wasn't invited over for thanksgiving dinner per se yeah okay. for a number of years right and uh when i left and moved down south uh, he became one of my biggest fans and one of my you know biggest supporters and uh, cool. so but yeah. there was a little time there a little tension and stuff but you know mm -hmm. it, it is what it is i mean it um yeah. um you know and uh you know my first 
practice at that racetrack, third mile, first time in a in a 112 inch wheelbase stock car. Mm -hmm. um, I'm practicing, and this old older Ford driver was behind my dad, and he tapped my dad on the shoulder, and he says, he says, Ray, he says that's your new driver, and uh, my dad said, yeah, you know, we're gonna run with him a little bit. And he says, no, that's your new driver. He says, I've been timing him lap after lap. He's been out there for 20 laps. And he has a varied attempt. Yeah. He says, so that's a consistent driver. Yeah. And so yeah. Uh, that's where it all started. And uh, like I said, I mean, uh, it's been a great ride. I had a great career. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those things that, you know, time goes by. So whatever happened with your, your gas station there? And was that one of your sponsors back in the day or your dad's? Uh, my dad, you know, he, he helped me for a little bit, but you know, when, uh, when I came back and started my own team again, mm -hmm. um, I chased money, you know, we had, um, we had a lot of great people up there that helped us over the years. Um, and you know, we, um, we became a multi-car team, meaning I had, you know, more than one race car. I had race cars for bigger tracks. I had race cars for short tracks. Mm -hmm. uh, I had full-time people working for us. Um, you know, and um, it just made us a, a team where, you know, we raced in Canada and all over New England. And, uh, you know, we competed for championships and wins every week. Okay. And um, I never won a championship. I came close. Uh, third was my best year. But, uh, you know, won a bunch of races and, and probably, um, you know, one of the most prestigious races to win is the Milk Bowl, the Vermont Milk Bowl. Okay. Uh, that's at Barry, Vermont. And um, it's something – it's a race that's been around for over 60 years now. Wow. And it's um, three 50-lap segments. And the first segment is start by time trials, line up by time trials. Wow, I bet it's fun to and, watch. And uh, it's 22 races on a high bank quarter mile. Okay. Uh, 22 cars. So the winner of the first segments get one point. Second place gets two. Mm -hmm. All the way back to the dead last, 22. And then they invert the field. Okay. And then you run another 50. How about that? <laughs> and then you run another 50. And the guy Jeez. or gal, but most of the time it was guys uh -huh. with the lowest number of points would win. Okay. Well, I won that three different times. Yeah. I'll and, bet that was a blast. Too. And it was. And, and uh, I'm the only driver in, in the state that now has won it, won the Milk Bowl and the Milk Cup, which mm -hmm. is a different division in the same day. Wow. How and, about that? Uh, so That's I was awesome. jumping from cars to cars and, uh, for a long time, there was one four-time winner, and then it was me, a three-time winner. But mm -hmm. then over the years, um, they've had, I think, there's three or four other guys have won it three times. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, it's just a part of history that, um, you know, um, in Barrie, it's a granite state. So we have these big granite stones where your name's etched on it, and okay. it's something that's never going to go away. Yeah. You know, Very so. cool. How so. was it whenever – uh, the, like the the furthest back you had to restart, you said they inverted the field, and then move you move back to the front. Yeah, I won uh, won the first one, uh, finished second in the, in the second one, mm -hmm. and finished uh, third in the third one. So I got five points. Oh wow! <laughs> so, um, so one question is, I mean, obviously, did you drink milk from the cup or? <laughs> I had to kiss a cow. Oh really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, cow. yeah. She was our trophy queen. Was trophy, trophy, trophy queen. queen. How about that? <laughs> yeah. So three different times, you yeah. know, and you give her a big that's old funny. kiss. And, yeah, that's good. And I did drink yes. milk from uh, from the the good bowl, and um, yeah. um, actually wore one one time, poured it all over me. <laughs> oh yeah. You know, I think it was the last one I won, but uh, you know, because those are yeah. that's one of those races. You know, to us, it was like the Daytona 500. You know, if you yeah, could win sure. that thing. Yep. I mean, there's there. Like I said, I was only one of two guys that won more than two. Yeah. For a yeah, long times. time, you know. And then now, like I said, there's three or four guys that's, that has caught us, mm -hmm. but um, they have not caught us in the amount of points that we've won. I mean, for me to win the last one, I think it was either five or six points. I mean, that number is almost unheard of any nowadays because mm -hmm. the cars are different. Mm -hmm. You know, they're more of a crate motor. You know, so it's hard to get to the front. You know, you can gain yeah. halfway there, but you, it's hard to get to the front. So, in this day and age, you have the simulation too. You didn't have that. Oh, you, no, no. You only ran when you were there. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. it. You know, so. So, who was the person, let's say, that called you up and said, "Here's your ride in NASCAR." <sighs> or would that have been yourself? That was myself in '94. Yeah. And I ran uh, ran 94, 95 on, as my uh, as an owner driver, um, 
Teddy Bear left in 95, in 95, and uh, we were chasing money throughout the winter. And um, I told my guys um, in 1996, I would run the first seven races unsponsored. And then we had, I think, a two or three week break back then. I said, I will guarantee you income until a paycheck, until the seventh race, you know, mm -hmm. after the seventh race. If we don't get a sponsor, then we're, we're going to shut the shop, uh, shop down. Well, in those first seven races, we sent home an average of 22 bush cars a race hmm. back in 1996. Yeah, so it was time to... And I made all seven with no money. Wow. Yes, there you go. And um, I was in Atlanta, and um, we, uh, we had blown up, I believe. And uh, so I'm in the trailer getting ready to change, and I see this guy, this driver, walking by the back of the trailer, and he's got four shocks in his hand. Mm -hmm. This is the race is going on. Yeah. And uh, next thing I know, I looked over, and David Ridland, who owned the 88 car, was standing there, and he says, uh, would you mind driving my race car? And I said, really? He goes, yeah. He says, um, my driver thinks it's terrible. Okay. I said, okay. And they were changing four shocks on it. Yeah, so they were changing, you know, they were yes. doing a bunch of work, right? That's usually bad. <laughs> so uh, Pete, or who was driving, I mean, he was about six foot tall, and, you know, obviously mm -hmm. he's a little taller than I. And so we get in there, and, and, you know, we were so many laps down, they adjusted the steering wheel for me and stuff, and I got the seat belts tight. And uh, so we proceeded to take off down Pitt Road, and David comes over to radio, and he goes, just be careful. Well, I took off, and the leaders are coming off, turn four mm -hmm. and I took off and I get up on a racetrack and next thing I know um I mean I'm pulling away from the leaders wow and with you know same tires you know within probably 20 laps or whatever mm, and right so uh Dave says what do you think and I'm like man this thing drives like a Cadillac <laughs> and I said what do you want me to do come back in he goes hell no this is just go out and stay out there you know so yeah. I ran the whole race so at Bristol, which was our seventh race, um, we were loaded up, and um, Ray Smith from Chevrolet and, and David came to the trailer, mm -hmm. and they said, um, we need you to meet Monday morning at the shop. I said, really? He goes, yeah. He said, uh, Pete just quit during the race. <laughs> we need a driver, and David wants to hire you. All right. Very nice. So, um, you know, timing worked great, you know, where yeah. I went and shut my team down and, and um, went and drove for David. And, you know, David, mm -hmm. David probably was the guy that gave me the biggest break, you know, mm -hmm. um, because, you know, we, we had some really good fast race cars. I mean, we won at Homestead, uh, dominated that race, um, had terrible pit stops, fell all the way back to 10th, 12th, came back up to lead and mm -hmm. win, you know, beat Mark Martin and, you know, Bobby Labonte and what year was that? Uh, 1998. Okay. It was, I think I, when I was with Nemechek, we won in 99. Yeah. I, it was, uh, yes. I think it was 98, 97 or 98. Mm -hmm. Um, and the thing that was ironic is, um, Bobby Labonte was just across the start finish line when I was passing him. Okay. And he was four tenths off, um, the pole. Mm -hmm. Two laps later, I, ran faster than the pole speed okay how about that and wow. i mean that car was just a rocket ship i think 98 is when junior might have won his first bush championship yeah if i'm not mistaken so uh um, we were out at, the, at dinner down there and uh next thing you know the waitress came over and had a big old cake and i said i didn't order any dessert and they said no that man over there in a the hat walking outside he's the one that bought it for you and the man in the hat was Jack Roush. Oh yeah, the man in the hat. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so you I, that. I, yeah. I, um, you know, got his attention. Yeah, and uh, nineteen ninety seven, um, I drove a handful of races um, for Joe Falk up at uh, last, I think, four or five races. Uh, Mike Wallace got out of the car, and then I drove for him. And then I started the season in 1998, and, uh, you know, when I got to Daytona, um, I went to the rookie meeting, and mm -hmm. everybody's down there is like, you know, what are you doing? I said, well, <laughs> I'm running for rookie of the year, you know, and, you know, my class that year was Kenny Irwin, uh, Steve Park, mm -hmm. myself, and Jerry Nadeau. 
And um, so we started the season, and um, it was really ironic. I remember this like it was yesterday. I was building a deck on our house, and um, all of a sudden my phone was ringing and uh, the whole week mm -hmm. from Jack Roush to Robert Yates to um, um, Mr. Hendrick to um, Ray Abraham yeah. to uh, Gibbs. I mean, Childress. I mean, every major car owner wow. that That's... had a team was calling me. Yeah. The only one that wanted me in a car was Jack. Okay. That season. The mm -hmm. uh, rest of them wanted to put me under retainer to the end of the year. Oh, Because they okay. were going to replace, you know, what, whatever driver they were going to replace. Mm -hmm. So I took, the, uh, I took the 16 ride with Jack because, you know, uh, I, I mean, I made several phone calls. Um, and, uh, you know, people said, look, you know, somebody comes up with some money, Joe Fox is going to put you in a car, you know, get you out. They're going to put somebody else in that car, you know? Mm -hmm. So if somebody's willing to give you a decent ride, go for it. You know, so he was going to give you a ride right that year. Yep. 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 Um, but ironic, just before I took that ride, um, Steve Park got hurt at Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Remember that. And I met with senior to drive the one car. Mm hmm and uh, I'm sitting over there. My wife's with me on Monday morning, and Don Hawk comes in, and he goes, hey, Kevin and Donna. He says, Dale, he says, that deal we're working on is still there. And with not so many pleasant words, Dale says, I've told you once, that's the guy I want in that car. Yeah. Come on, Kevin. So we went and walked around his new shop, which was still being built. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Over and, off of uh, 136 back then, now yep. it's Highway 3. And so um, we're walking through, and he says, uh, well, what do you think? I said, well, i got one question. I said, when, when Steve gets back, what are you going to do for me? He said, well, I said, thank you very much, but I'm going to put Steve back in the car. He's my driver. Mm. I said, well, he goes, is that a problem? I said, well, you know, Dale, you only run for rookie year one time All right. in each division. I said, if I put in a big effort, and then all of a sudden, with three, four races to go, you move me out, I could lose rookie of the year. Yeah. So he scratched his head, and he looked over at me, and he goes, well, you know what? He says, uh, I'll put you in a second car. Okay. I was going to say that that would work out. You know? So <laughs> yeah. he says, you got to let me know by noon tomorrow. This is 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Mm. So I came uh, came home. I called Terry Labonte. I called Ricky Rudd. called a couple other drivers, and I said, you know, what's your thoughts? Gave him the whole scenario. Mm -hmm. They looked at me, almost every one of them said, loyalty and 50 cent won't buy you a cup of coffee. Yeah. Take the deal. So the next morning I was driving up to Martinsville for a test and I called Dale up about nine o'clock. And he looked at me or he told me on the phone, he said, man, he says, Penzoil had pressured us so bad, we had to put Daryl in the car. Oh, but he man. says, if you would have told me last night when we were at the shop, you yeah. would have been in that car. Oh, well, but you know, yeah. it, it didn't work out. So, you know, I went to Roush and, you know, ran, uh, uh replaced Ted Musgrave up at Michigan, um, in the end of 98. Mm -hmm. Um, we got to Atlanta and, uh, 98 and a PR guy came up to me and they said, well, we just got done having a meeting and <clears throat> between you and, and, um, Kenny, whichever one finished ahead of the other is going to win the rookie of the year. Mm. Kenny Irwin. Kenny Irwin. And uh, we raced back and forth all day long, all night long. That was, I think, one of the longest rain delays we ever had because mm -hmm. uh, we had several rain outs, and we finished that night. But um, Kenny finished like 15th or 14th. I finished right behind him. Steve yeah. Park was right behind me, and Jerry was right behind him. So okay. uh, Kenny ended up winning yeah. uh, winning the champ, uh, the rookie of the year. And, and – um, and you were second. I was second. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Kenny and I were really good friends. Uh, he um, he flew with me a lot that year. He mm -hmm. flew with me a lot after that. Um, and it was sad that we lost him, you know, at New Hampshire. Yeah. You know, because yeah. he was a uh, he was a really good friend. And when when we'd go to the racetrack, you know, in our motorhomes, we'd always park next to each other. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'd hang with each other. I mean, it was just a, he was a really good. Uh, person, you know, off the racetrack. And I was uh, building his engines for that year. Uh, his qualifying engines 
And I had just met him not too long, well, before the season started that year. Tony Glover bring, brought him through the room where I was working, and, and he said, this is your engine builder right here. So, you know, we shook hands, and, and I met him and got to know him a little bit. Yep. And uh, But, yeah, that was really sad today that when we found out he had passed away, and it was just like, all right, everybody go home. Yeah. 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 So, uh, you know, I went to the went to his wake, and um, I walked up to the family to give my condolences, and I introduced myself, and the, his dad says, you don't have to introduce yourself. I know who you are. You're the guy that almost took my Rookie of the Year away from Kenny, you know. Oh, but you didn't, so. <laughs> but I did, you know, but, uh, end, you yes. know, we had, we had a good, uh, uh-huh. yeah. you know, good chat, you yeah. know. So, uh, you know, it was uh, – 94 or 98 was a tough year, you know, we, um, for rookies, you know, uh, Steve got hurt, Jerry got hurt, um, uh, you know, um, uh, Kenny, you know, got killed and, and, uh, you know, and, and out of the rookie class, I was lucky enough not to have any serious injuries throughout my career compared to the rest of the guys. So, uh, if yeah. I'm right, that last race in Atlanta didn't start to like one in the morning. <laughs> I think it finished that one in the morning. And if I'm right, yeah. I heard it was prolonged to make sure they ran that night because rumor had Earnhardt and Labonte were supposed to be hunting in New Mexico for the next <laughs> yeah. day or something like that. I don't they, they were, never know. They were going – somebody was going on a trip, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and I'm not sure um, which one of them. I'm almost sure it had to be senior, sure. you know. But, yeah, we finished that race. I remember one time it was Rockingham, and they, the race ended – and Dale and Terry were supposed to go hunting on the way to the next race, I guess it was Atlanta. And the chopper landed right in the trio of Rockingham, picked them both up and took off. Yeah. <laughs> wow. yeah. So we have a couple questions. Uh, one of them is right from the beginning, who was your favorite driver when you grew up in the cup series of the upper echelon when you were growing up or what caught your eye? I would have to say David Pearson. Yeah. Um, I ran a number 21 up there. Okay. Um, and the reason I say that is uh, – David was one of those guys always took care of his equipment and um, you know towards the end of the race you know that car came on because it was still in one piece and and uh, you know um, that's why they called him the silver fox you know he was out able to out fox people throughout the whole race and uh, so I I always enjoyed um, racing uh, watching him race Um, got to meet him a few times Mm -hmm. Um, obviously he raced against his kids um, and worked with, you know, uh, Ricky uh, was a good crew chief, and he always seemed to be near us in the garage area. So, you know, just a really good family. But, uh, yeah, David Pearson was my number one. And uh, one other question from Sissy O'Dell. Does Kevin still play in any charity golf tournaments, and have you ever played with Darryl, Dale Jarrett? I've uh, never played uh, with him. I played on, at a few tournaments that he was at. Um, he is a least – from what I hear, he's a better golfer than I am. You know, mm-hmm. uh, um, I keep working on my game. Um, I play, uh, uh, try to play once a week, uh, especially now during the winter time. Mm-hmm. Uh, since uh, since I've been retired from um, racing uh, a few years ago, I joined the Senior Golf Week Amateur Tour here in Charlotte, and uh, as a sea flighter, uh, first year I finished 15th in points. The last two years I won the sea flight. So uh, this year I'm moving up to B flight, but uh, in the soft season, uh, in the last two months, I've changed my swing, I've changed my you know putting grip. I'm working on you know, I got a little simulator type deal at the house, you know, where mm-hmm. I you know I have a, a launch monitor, I got a putting pad, you know, and I'm really I'm, I'm it's, it's racing but in golf, you know, yeah. I, I'm trying to make myself better, and um, you know so uh, you know. Just tweaking the game. You should go with us down to uh, Top Golf. We went last Tuesday night. Yeah, it was last Tuesday, and I'd been there a couple of times. And I took David, and I mean, I'm my shoulder's still sore, <laughs> but I was only hitting balls about 100 and 102 miles an hour. He gets up and he's whacking them close to 140 miles an hour. Yeah, David was. <laughs> I was trying to slow my speed down because you know when you're whenever the shaft if the yeah. shaft isn't stiff enough, yeah. when you do that, then it wants to dive. But yeah. I kind of, I kind of finally made a happy medium with that. <laughs> so, but Phil took an awesome video. Oh, I couldn't like, believe how hard he was hitting the ball. That was a lot I'm of like fun. Harmon Killebrew with yeah. a baseball bat. Hey, and Dawson Cram Racing's tuned in with us tonight. Yeah. What's up, Dawson? Have you ever Kim? raced raced Dio Brando? Kevin? Wants to know if you ever raced at Hickory Motor Speedway. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. raced there several times. Uh, we. Um, 
in, uh, in 1996, um, we had missed, uh, I think, like four races that year. And, um, you know, it's, it's frustrating as a driver to miss any race, you know. Sure, yeah. So we went up to Hickory, and uh, I ran 102 lap qualifying events or practices, laps. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, obviously we didn't put that many tires on, but we were, you know, we could work on tires, work on setup and stuff. And it was all about rhythm. Well, I get hired by David Ridland to go back up there. And uh, so we go up there and we sat outside pole, just missed the pole. Oh. <laughs> and that's uh, the first time I ever sat on the front row, hmm. you know, in two and a half years. So I uh, love the place. Um, you know, it has a lot of history, yeah. you know, and uh, we've been up there, you know, not a lot, but, uh, you know, there's a special event up there. We'll go up and watch a race because it's just, uh, you know, it's Saturday night racing. Yeah. You know, is what, to me, is what NASCAR ha- is missing is right. to bring that type of feel back, um, you know, for uh, the fans so mm-hmm. they can interact with the drivers. Um, you know, I, I would think with these one-day shows that they should be able to incorporate something like that, I would think. I think they're trying to get back to some of that. I know I was talking about it yeah, about a year and a half ago. We went through that spell on my show where it was just asking people what they would like to see changed, and that was one of the big things, having some night races and things like that. You were talking about uh, Chuck Bound. I remember Chuck and Jim mm-hmm. from, from way back, well, early 90s, I guess yep. it was. Yeah. I've met both of them before. Um, what did they end up doing? Uh, Jim and, uh, and his dad, when I left the – you know, I moved my race team out of Asheboro to mm-hmm. Mooresville. Uh, when I uh, came over here to drive for Ridland, uh, they started a, like a NASCAR school. Okay. You know, uh, I don't know how successful it ever was, but um, I, I knew that was going on. And I actually ran into all three of them um, last year over at, I think it was not last year, I think it was 19, over at the um, uh, Go, GoPro. They had a go kart oh, yeah, thing yeah. over there, yeah. uh, charity event. Motorplex. Yeah. yeah, and they brought drivers over and, and re raced. And um, they, uh, I met, you know, Jick, uh, Jim and, and Dick and Chuck were there. Okay. And, um, you know, they, we had a nice little, you know, reunion, I guess. A good bit of drivers go down there. I know uh, Ricky Reds raced to some down there too. Yeah, yeah a lot of them. Yeah, really. Lake Speed ended up coming in. Hmm. And unfortunately, Lake Speed, that? I think. I think he was a champion of some sort, you know, world champion go kart racer, yeah, and I mean yes. he smoked us. I mean yeah. he smoked us over there, but you know it was all about having fun. And, you know, now that I'm retired from racing, I mean, uh, anytime I can do any charity events like that, you know, it's just fun to go back and see everybody. Now you have a lawn care service, is it? Or I do, I do Matrix Lawn and Landscaping out of Mooresville. Okay. Yeah, we. Uh, I, I actually uh, <laughs> how uh, how it all started. Um, I was in. Uh, Watkins Glen. I was walking through the garage area, and Bill Elliott pulled me aside. He says, "Hey, Kevin, you got a minute?" I said, "Yeah, sure." He says, "Well, what are you doing after this?" I said, "Get on the airplane, flying back to Mooresville." He goes, "No, no, no. After you get done driving." And I'm like, "I ain't even thought about it." He goes, "Well, you need to." He says, "Don't be like us in our era, where we're not. Look, we didn't look towards the future. We thought we could race till we we're 70 years old, I guess." All right. So. Um, I came back, and uh, to be honest with you, I love working outside. I love um, uh, wearing shorts in the summertime. And, uh, Same here. So I bought a lawn care business, and um, you know, I've been in business now since, I think, 2007, 2006. Um, unfortunately, it's, it's uh, the last five years, it's affected my business like it has affected a lot of other people's business where you can't find help. So, um, you know, I've tried to maintain my level, you mm-hmm. know, growth because I don't want to oversell and under deliver. Yep. You know, I'd rather, you know, over deliver and undersell, you know. So um, over the I'd say over the last five years, I could have probably bought 10 landscape companies out. Mm-hmm. And my first question to them is, why are you selling? And they're like, well, we can't find help. Well, what makes you think I can, you know? Mm, yeah. I know. So, and, I'm they, with you. and they say, well, you're a NASCAR driver. You know, you can pay. Well, no, I, I'm a business owner. Yeah, you, you know, to... My NASCAR days are over with. You know, I, right. I'm a business owner now. So, you know, I watch my P's and Q's. And so I just stay, uh, you know, stay even. And, you know, I, I do what I can. And, um, you know, I got two, uh, two full-time teams, you know, four guys working for me. And mm-hmm. uh, I try to keep them year-round, you know, so we're working yeah. now. Yeah. 
uh, just because I don't like replacing people. Right. You know, I'm a loyal owner and boss, yeah. and uh, I'd like to keep my same crew. And and they, when you keep your same crew, they they able to keep uh, in contact with the customer. You mm -hmm. know, so next year, you know, when they go back to the line, they don't have to introduce themselves. You know, they, they know yeah. you know what they expect and everything. So it just works yeah. out well that yeah. way. You sound a lot like me because I started my landscaping business. That was sort of my part of my exit plan, I guess, to to take care of myself after I got out of NASCAR. And uh, but then now, like you said, hiring or finding people that you can keep consistently through the whole year is the other the tough part of it. But I made it for myself where I can work on my landscaping stuff. And then in the wintertime, I'm working in my shop. <laughs> and then now I'm like covered up in my shop. And I'm like, do I sell my landscaping business? Do I hire somebody? Full time to take care of it, and that's well. They're never going to yeah, be as good as you, so you know. Well, but I, I, I understand with. there's a guy named Phil. Yes. I think he's looking for a job. You know. Oh, yeah. Yes. Well, well you know. the only problem is he's old. Yeah, he's old. <laughs> he's old. If I ever well, get out of this wheelchair, he, 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 yeah, he does have a driver's license. So yeah, he's got that going. That's for good. Him. That's yeah, good. That's yeah. good. But we've also got questions now. Okay. You yes. being from the Northeast. You would automatically think that's a possibility you ran modifieds. Did you ever drive the modifieds? Never did. Never did. Never no. did. No, no. Wow. Um, one of my good friends um, was uh, Richie Evans. And uh, we would run into each other about three, four times a year because a lot of times the Bush North would go to Stafford or Thompson and stuff and Richie would there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we'd always you know, shoot the breeze. Uh, we bought some engines from Corky Cookman, who um, was a great modified racer up there. And, but, uh, you know, I never really got into it. I was a taxi cab guy. What's a taxi cab guy? Full body car. Oh, okay. Okay. Right, right, right. I got I gotcha. guess you, you never heard of the taxi cabs? Uh, yeah, I, I, I know what you're talking about now. <laughs> it, for a minute there. Now that you're explaining it, I know what you're saying. Yeah. It, it, it did. It was like, okay, I've heard this. Yeah. Or it wasn't registering right away. Yeah. So That's, that's right. You guys are young. Yeah, we got another question from Dio Brando. Have you ever ran a North Explorer Speedway? And if so, do you think any race car drivers, past and present, would get together to help open it up, about, at least to the lower level NASCAR leagues like K and N? Uh, you know, we we um, we came down here. It was still operating in '94, uh, but the Bush cars never went there, um, and then I think they shut down in '96 or '97. And, and they shut it down. I think they shut down in 96 because we were cup racing in 97. We never went there. Uh, it was one of those racetracks that I always watched. I really loved it. Um, we go up and get a Christmas tree up there and we drive by it every year. And uh, it's sad. It's sad that places like Rockingham um, and Wilkesboro uh, are not, pat not part of the NASCAR schedule because mm -hmm. I think there's so much history um, and it's that type of racing is what the true NASCAR fans are looking for. Right. You know, yeah. instead of the big cookie cutters. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I think, um, you know, the cookie cutters were good back in my era where I could go from first to 40th back to first. But nowadays, when you get to first or top five, that's where you stay unless you have a bad pit stop or whatever because the cars are not like they used to be. And, mm -hmm. Um, you know, those are, that's why I think the fan base has, has stepped away from those cookie cutters because who wants to see, you know, and, and I love Kevin Harvick. I raced against him for years. Who wants to see Kevin or Kyle or Brad or any of these guys just dominate a race? I right. mean, uh, it's just, you know, it's like when I used to run speedway races, I used to love them. Yeah. And people say, why'd you love speedway races? Because I could have a car that was, wouldn't qualify for nothing because it was a turd, mm -hmm. but you know, we ran ninth in the Daytona 500 with it, yeah. you know, and should have should have finished top five, but they went two by two and I couldn't get through the middle. But, yeah. um, you know, uh, back then we could go, like, again, go from 40th to first and back to 40th again. Yeah, and that was a lot more fun watching that, obviously. It wasn't mm -hmm. boring, like, yeah. just starting a race. Okay, they're in the same place they were 10 yep. laps ago. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, so. Uh, yeah, so is it time? Oh, my. Yeah, more cowbell. That's our... Uh... Sterling Marlin, Marlin story. Do you have a good Sterling Marlin story you could share with us? That's you know PG. <laughs> well, uh, yes, I, I guess uh, it's not a racing one. Um, we uh, we were in um, New York City for the banquet. First time I ever went to New York City. Believe it or not, being from Vermont, I've never been to New York City. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was our first year down. 
because uh, I was with Roush, and it was the rookie of the year, so it was 98. And uh, so we're walking around with Jimmy Finney and uh, Laurie Hausberger. House Hall Boston. Hall Boston. Um, and it was 70 degrees out in December. And all the bars up there were open, outside seating. I mean, we were having a grand time. And next thing you know, here comes Sterling and his wife and Schrader and his wife. And, I mean, we it was, I don't know, there was Frankie Stoddard. I mean, there was a bunch of us. Mm-hmm. And we're just going from bar to bar to bar to bar. Well, it ended, we got back to the hotel at the Waldorf at, five o'clock that morning hmm. and um laurie and she had to have a she had a pr meeting with mark at eight or nine hmm. and uh she struggled through it you know to get there and uh that afternoon um i wasn't feeling my best either and so uh i called down and i ordered some chicken noodle soup because you know i had to get something yeah. to stay down right to go to the banquet and so the lady, uh, she goes, is there something going on in the hotel? She says, you're like the 20th person that's ordered chicken noodle soup. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to the we got the happy yeah. hour at the banquet, and Frankie and Sterling and his wife and all the ones that were out that night, mm-hmm. we had all ordered chicken noodle soup that afternoon <laughs> just oh, to have yes. something. To, but, uh, yeah, Sterling, yeah. was uh, he was in rare form like the rest of us. Oh, that's great. Yeah, but a good uh, Dale Earnhardt story. Um, you know, um, yeah, it was interesting. We, um, you know, we were racing at Bristol and, uh, I was running the bush race and junior was running the bush race and, uh, junior, I was, I think it was his first year and, um, junior had a bad habit of running into somebody instead of passing them. He'd hit you and move you out of the way. Mm. So I'm running second behind Steve Grisson, 15 laps in a race, and I go into three, and I get knocked up the racetrack, mm-hmm. right? And my spotter comes over, three car, and I'm like, really? So we run another lap. We go back into three, and he runs into me. This time he hit me hard enough, and I pushed up the racetrack. Hmm. So he got on the side of me, and I drove. I stayed on, and when I got into one, and I jumped on the brake, he blew by me and I gassed it and I hit him right in the butt Oh yeah! <laughs> up the race track. He goes. And obviously at that time he didn't have a lot of talent and he crashed, just hit the wall. Yeah. And I ended up winning that race. So the next day I run in the cup car and I'm driving for Roush there. <clears throat> so I walk up and Dale's got his feet up and I walked over, put my arm around him. I says about last night, that's between you and my kid. I says, Ooh, okay, no big deal. Mm-hmm. And it was. I mean, it goes between me and Junior, you know. So I'm running that race. All of a sudden, bang, I get hit right in the butt up the racetrack. I go, and there goes the three car. I'm like, this is between wow. me and the kid, huh? Uh-huh. So I ran probably 200 laps that night, and I caught him going into one. Mm-hmm. I drove two tires on the apron. The other two tires was on the right side or the left side of his car, and up the racetrack he goes. <laughs> And you know, those guys, we became best of friends and we yeah. never, ever touched each other in my whole career. How about that? And, uh, you know, yeah. and, and the people were telling me, you know, they said the fans went crazy, you sure. know, because somebody gave Dale Sr. back his own medicine. Yeah. But I didn't wreck him. You know, I just, yeah. you know, and uh, I mean, we, we talked about it after we had yeah. a bunch of laughs about it and, uh, you know, just fun times, you know. Re- respect. That's right? it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. We were talking about golf earlier, and I had sent uh, Richard Bostick the link to this. He had said that ought to be a good interview. Ask him about his uh, how his golf game's going. <laughs> so, yes, we talked about that. And uh, Bob Tracy said, awesome guy. Bob, Bob's a good man. Yeah. Actually, Richard, I miss going yeah. to the race day because Richard always has a joke. Oh, you know? oh yes, he always, does. Always has a joke, you know. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we, uh, you know the, the one good thing that I will take away from this um, is the amount of great people that I've been able to meet, mm-hmm. you know, in my career down here, you know, over 20 years. Um, and I didn't care where I went, you know, there was always somebody come up to me and wanted an autograph and, and mm-hmm. 2020, um, was such a tough year for many, many people for many different reasons. Right. The one thing that kept a smile on my face was almost every week religiously 
I would sign somebody's hero cards or baseball cards. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, to me, that made me, my day better that after almost six years, people still are requesting autographs. Yeah. And, you that's, know, I'm making I, their day happy by yeah. doing it, you mm -hmm. know. And so, uh, you know, being a guy from Vermont, uh, a little small town, um, to uh, make it mm -hmm. in, in NASCAR, uh, my only regret, regret is I never won a cup race. Right. And... I blame that 95% on me. I mean, mm -hmm. there was several times we had cars that should win, but I had <clears throat> several times where bad luck bit me. Yeah, sure. I mean, we yeah. had a, we were leading at Pocono, get, coming down. We were, there was only one other car that could run the end of the race, and mm -hmm. that was Chad Little, but he was over almost a full track behind us. Yeah. And, um, uh, we came, we're coming down to the trioval. We're coming down, pit, getting ready to pit. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a big piece of rubber build up right in front of the battery box. We were doing some arrow stuff there. And a and big piece, almost the size of a soccer ball of rubber fell when I hit the curb mm -hmm. and it went underneath the left rear. Oh, man. Unloaded the rear car and I slapped the wall, ended sure. my day. My team was devastated, and uh, the good thing is my sister always taped the races, and so I got the, the tape on it, and I brought it to the shop, and we played it in front of the, my crew chief and, and Jack, and, uh, you know, yeah, it's just thing happens. But you know one thing, how many people can say they've won at Bristol? Yeah, it's true. So, you know, uh, you know if you look at the – if you look at the – Xfinity, as they call it today, mm -hmm. um, and you go look and see how many guys have won a race. Yeah, it's under a hundred, and that's the thing too. You won a race, period. So, yeah, it's I under a hundred. Yeah, and to have two of them, yeah, you yeah. know. Yeah. Um, and where, was they, your, you know, where was your second victory yet? Okay. Homestead and Bristol. Homestead, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Bristol, you either get it or you don't there when you drive yeah. it there. I know many yeah. drivers that were so. Um, like Mike McLaughlin told me, he overdrove it all the time until yeah. Harry Gant told him, slow down, son. Yeah. You're overdriving it until he, yeah. he got it. So. Yeah. Got so, a good question here. Uh, actually, a statement from Mike Bear. For his ninth birthday back in 1999, one of his favorite presents was a Kevin LePage die cast car. He still has got. He still has <laughs> it in his collection. And then a good question uh, by Jack McVeigh. I don't know what this means. He wants to know what was going on in your mind when you were sitting by the wall and your car started to drive itself. Oh, over at Rockingham. <laughs> yeah, I, I crashed at Rockingham and I was sitting on top of the bank and next thing you know, the car rolled down. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah and, and, and again, that was one of those frustrating events where um, I got taken out and we had a car that should have won down there. I mean, we, we had a race car, Roush, Roush prepared cars, um at darlington we were fast there um we were fast at atlanta you know we sat on a pole at atlanta um there was a lot of racetracks that we had some fast race cars and it's just you know the uh the monkey on our back stayed with us you know for several races um several years in my cup career and um you know and, and uh it was frustrating you know mm -hmm. um i mean we had uh i would go into these cars uh, like uh, James Smith, the seven nation wins car, you mm -hmm. know, we'd go in that car and, and, you know, outperform the previous driver. And then, you know, a uh, wheel spacer would loosen up, you know, mm -hmm. and the front wheel would loosen up during the race because of, you know, the nut screws would back off. I mean, just stupid yeah. things that yeah, would yeah. always bite right. us, yeah. right. you know, Morgan McClure. I mean, we had fast race cars at Morgan McClure mm -hmm. and uh, something stupid would happen. You know, uh, we had a fast car at Daytona qualified i think top i think fourth or something like that and um just riding along big wreck in the back last car went around come off the wall clip me you mm -hmm. know and took me out so just stupid things that uh you know um sometimes they're out of your control yep. you know yep. and uh but at the end of the day um you know nascar has been a great ride yeah that had to be so much fun i mean i, I remember racing in the go-karts and i did that for a few years built my own engines that kind of stuff and it was so much fun once I strapped in there and I was driving around the track. But I can't imagine driving a stock car like that and, and well, running up front. And my wife used to um, uh, spot for me in a lot of races. Yeah. And, um, you know, I used to tell people that 
when she used to go up to Spotterstein, I'd be down on, on the racetrack by myself getting introduced. And uh, people would come up and they say, what's it like? You know, mm -hmm. and she'd be right there, you know, and I was like, well, we take our wedding rings off because she has to treat me as a driver. She can't treat me as her husband. Yeah. And that's what she did. Yeah. yeah. And so they would look at her and they said, well, aren't you nervous? And she said, I feel more comfortable being up on the roof watching than being on the ground and not seeing. Yeah. And I always told people, I said, this is my coffin or my office. Yeah. Right. And not too many people can go to their office and die, you know, mm -hmm. doing what they're doing. So, I mean, I always... I never looked at it that way, you know, but that's how I always envisioned that, you know, if something was going to happen to me, I wanted to be in the race car. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, fortunate for me, you know, I never had any serious wrecks. Um, or I had serious wrecks, but never got seriously injured. Yeah. But, uh, you know, uh, the business is uh, it's a great business to be involved. And, um, you know, like I said, uh, I was just talking to some guys this, during the wintertime from Canada, guys I used to race with on Facebook. Yeah. Um, and they're like, man, he's just, you know, you're, we're so proud of you, you know, a guy from the North to go down there and make it, you know, and, uh, not many guys can say that, you know, and, sure. and, and, and yeah. if I were to come down today, like it did in 1994, mm -hmm. I'd probably been able to run one, maybe two truck races with the money I had yeah. and go home, All right? you know? Yep. And I think that's where the business model has changed, where, um, you're not enticing fathers to bring their sons along if they got a little bit of money i mean because they just can't afford to do it anymore yeah you right. know and you can't even go to some of these uh smaller divisions you know even the local racetracks they've gotten out of control with all the stuff that's going on and mm -hmm. i mean i went home to vermont in in um 2017 to run my last technical race at the at the, at the milk bowl and uh our car was a subpar car because we didn't spend the money that they guys up there were doing. They were taking their factory Coney shock and sending them down here south, and they were cutting them up, changing the oil on them, and sending them back up there. Okay. Just the oil change alone was huge, but you couldn't tell because they were doing such a great job on it. Yeah. And um, so technically, I haven't run my last race because I didn't make the race. Um, you know, we we're in a position to make the last uh, transfer spot, and I'm sitting there thinking, okay, I'm uh, a Vermonter. I won this race three times. I'm here to run my last race. I brought a lot of local sponsors that I had from back home, some sponsors from down here. Mm -hmm. We had about 100 people in the grandstands, you know, family members, friends not counting the pack grandstands that came to watch and uh i didn't get a promoter's option and uh i just like you know what mm. that's shame on them yeah that you is know? for sure so yeah did uh, you know uh, peter gibbons yep because he was i know he's one that moved down from canada mm -hmm. i raced, raced against the, peter okay yeah he raced in the uh cast car i guess it was back then yep yeah i raced with him uh several years i think it was and Dawn had asked, uh, Dawn Clark, she had mentioned, did you talk about David Ridling in the Bush Series? A little bit. I mean, he was the one that gave me the uh, the ride. Yeah. Um, and again, I mean, uh, another guy um, probably was the most in instrumental for getting me a cup, cup mm -hmm. shot because, yeah. uh, you know, putting me in the 88 car, which we had a, a lot of success. Yeah. I mean, that car... That car was fast, and uh, there was, I think, three or four races that we finished second to guys that were fuel mileage things, and you know we're brute horsepower and handling, but we just didn't have. I mean, we caught I think Jeff Purvis up at uh, Michigan coming out of four, and just almost got him at the line. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's a lot yeah. of examples where David built some really really fast cars, and unfortunately for David, um, I mean he got greedy um, to some extent. Um, they brought a young driver in that had a little bit of money um, and, you know, got rid of me sure. and really suffered, you know, the following year. And, and you know, eventually he went out of business. Mm -hmm. And um, but, you know, um, we've remained friends, you know, since then. Yeah. Very so good. You've, you know, you talk about all the friendships you've made throughout your career in NASCAR. Tell us a little bit about Mark Martin, because I know you all are buds, too, right? Yeah, I mean, Mark was, uh, we were teammates, and, um, you know, uh, Mark, um, 
Mark was a guy that when I would go to these races and, um, you know, I could lean on him as far as, you know, advice of what we need to do, you know, getting around the corner, um, you know, how to take care of tires and stuff. You know, he was a, a, a big instrumental. And, you know, when I was racing in the Bush Series, you know, he would come down and race against us, uh, either when I was on my own team or when I we went to the 88 team. And, uh, you know, we always won beat him. So that would, he just made our game step up. You know, and the one difference between back then when, you know, Mark came down and ran into the Bush Series is, yeah, he was a Roush driver, but it was a separate entity. You know, where today, you know, these cars that come from the cup side that run in the Xfinity program, they're, they're a cup team. You know, they just right, down right. down sure. in the lower division. So uh, it's like when Dale Jarrett came in, you know, and I, I beat him at Bristol uh, to get the win. Um, you know, that was a separate car you know, that was run out of, you know, um, out of Hickory, you mm -hmm. know, it wasn't out of, you know, yeah. Yates shop, you know, right. so right. it was a huge difference back then as far as, you know, guys coming into the Bush series, you know, as a cup driver versus the guys coming in today being a cup driver. I mean, their cars are so far superior. Yep. So uh, Janine was tuned in to us as well from Jersey Cape Yachts. And if you'd like a Jersey Cape Yacht, give them a call up here. They're, of course, in New Jersey. But they'll sell you a boat down here. It's actually, it's not a boat. It's I shouldn't a yacht. say that. It's a yacht. yacht. It's a custom-built yacht. And you could put that thing on Lake Norman and stand out from the rest. <laughs> so give them a call. at 609-965-8650. And check them out, jerseycapeyachts.com. And they're located at 2143 River Road, Lower Bank, New Jersey. Have you ever been up to Lower Bank? I can't say I have. New Jersey. <laughs> I've never been to New Jersey or New York. So... I'd be out of place. I'd be so out of place. So yeah. just saying. Uh, but they're on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, as well as Instagram. Yes. And I guess I had said uh, Artie Ford was in Michigan, which is my typical mistake. He's in New Hampshire. I always say he's in Michigan. Sorry about that, RD. Yeah. They're about the same thing, though, right? New Hampshire, Michigan. Uh, not quite. <laughs> <laughs> that's like saying it's somebody from Maine and New Hampshire are the same, right? Uh, that's close but because that's not far, you know. Yes. But uh, yeah. that's about probably – Five, six hundred miles difference. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a big lake in between. Yeah, there is several of them. <laughs> uh, so. so anyway, but thanks so much for being with us tonight. Yeah, I had Man. a great time. You know, um, you know, a lot of people want to know what I do. You mm -hmm. know, and like I yeah. said, uh, this golfing thing is um, I'm taking it really serious. Um, you know, last year was probably my best year so far. Uh, we played 22 tournaments, uh, 20 top tens, 18 top fives, three wins, championship. You know, so. Uh, I'm looking forward to the, the next chapter this year, you know, mm -hmm. with Beef Light. And, um, you know, hopefully we can take some wins home and, uh, you know, have a lot of, a lot of fun. That's, a, that's what it's about, it's having fun. Yeah, can, having fun. Can anybody mm -hmm. follow you on that or how do they yeah. follow along with that? Just Facebook? my Facebook page, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because we play um, about every other week you know, on tour. And uh, we travel all over uh, Charlotte area, yeah. Salisbury, uh, Kannapolis. Um, end of the season, we go down to Hilton Head. For two day down there so nice, uh, nice. it's it's a uh, it's a really uh, I've got a got a chance to meet a lot of great guys you know got made a lot of great friends um, and it's it's ironic you know um, a lot of guys wanted to play with me because they recognized my name mm -hmm. you know and sure. they, they just want to know about racing and the first year was probably the, mo the worst year for me because um, that's all they want to talk about was racing yeah you know I'm out there <laughs> trying to win you know and then they yes. want to talk about racing you know and yeah. so you lose your concentration you sure, know right, sure. so um the following year when I started playing with some of these guys newer guys that came in and they wanted to play with me I was like I'm gonna tell you right now you want to ask a question ask before we tee off because once I tee off you know I don't yeah. talk racing uh, that's what I was going to ask you was it uh, are you still competitive <laughs> oh yeah yeah you know uh, very very competitive and yeah. you know and and that's why I want to take that next step up yeah you know because um we chase points mm -hmm. you know if i can't win yeah my goal is to finish second if i can't finish second my goal is to finish third mm -hmm. you know win the war win it you know mm -hmm. and i chase points mm -hmm. and so i mean when i won this year i won um i won the second place guy was almost two thousand points behind me there you go you know and i was just consistent <laughs> you know yeah. and so now now i'm going to be up to be i'm going to play better players mm -hmm. and um you know i want i want to make my game better so yeah, right. um you know i'm looking forward to it i i've already played with some of my guys the, you know, some of the guys in b flight because they were in c and they moved up early uh so I'm, I'm looking forward to a really good year so that competitive edge is your 
brother taken up golfing yet? <laughs> uh, he actually yeah. has. Yeah. He, yeah. He, uh, well, you know, where we lived in Vermont, we actually lived probably from here across the street from a golf course. So uh, I worked on the golf course where, before I went to college. So I've been a golfer my whole life. It was just that fork in the road, kind of like uh, you're talking about Dale Jarrett being an avid golfer. Well, his yeah. brother Glenn, I guess, was could have been on the t- pro tour. I, gee, Dale could have. Yeah, Dale, Dale could have been. Both. Yeah, and sure. uh, you know they chose the uh, the racing career, which right. uh, you know back then um, when your last name was Jarrett. Yeah, you, know, you, you follow you there. follow down the footsteps, but um, you know today, I mean, I'm actually surprised that Dale didn't um, go into the senior end of it. Um, you know, he, I talked to him about it and, uh, he, he, he could have, he just didn't want to, after chasing yeah. racing mm-hmm. for every week, you yeah. know, all, all the years, sure. he didn't want to continue to do that. No, you know? when you can and, do a little TV here yeah, and there. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. for me, um, you know, my business is doing well. Um, I'm getting to the point where, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the next chapter in my life to retire, you know, and just play a lot of golf. And uh, so, you know, I've, I've, I've chased the, the NASCAR business for a long time. Now I want to chase the golf business for a long time. Well, it sounds like you're working really hard to be good at retiring. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, you know, um, you know I, my saying is uh, tomorrow's not promised, so enjoy right. today while you can. Amen. That's right. So I really, really do uh, enjoy it. But I also enjoy doing stuff like this. Uh, mm-hmm. Matter of fact, I got to do a, a, a thing on Wednesday for um, a group of guys in Canada that I used to race with. Mm-hmm. They have a show up there. And uh, so I think this is like my fourth or fifth one in the last year. So, yeah. uh, you know, it's good to catch up on people mm-hmm. and people want to know what I'm doing. And, uh, you know, if you want to look, follow me on golf. Just look on my Facebook page. I'm, I'm on there all the time. Yeah, there you go. I saw Glenn Jarrett out here 2019. We had our Friday after fives and I believe the Catalinas might have been playing and uh, he, he was out here hanging out, so I went up and talked to him just right down the street here. Yeah. Uh, Cissy Odell says, my dad played golf with Ned here at Catawba Country Club mm-hmm. back in the day. And I was I had messaged John Bryan earlier. He said, old school racer right there. <laughs> That's right. That's kind of what we are, you know, old school racers. I mean, you know, I, I wish um, I, and I really wish that somehow that could somehow come back and play. Mm-hmm, yeah. I really do, but um, you know, it's like anything in life. You know, things changes, yeah. and um, you know, we may never ever see you know what we used to. But mm-hmm. the one comment that I always get is the era that I was involved in, with you know, from the mid '90s um, to the mid 2000s was probably one of the best eras in oh, yeah. in NASCAR. Absolutely, yeah. you know. Um, you know, the Lee Petty got it started, you know, and then, uh, you know, Richard Kale, they moved it up to Ladder and Bobby, and then, you know, Rusty, mm-hmm. Dale, myself, Ricky, you know, Terry, you know, we took it to the next level. Yeah. And and then the Harvicks and, you know, Bushes, they got it a little bit more, but then it leveled out. Yeah. You know, for so sure. yep. um, we really had a great time. Great time. And that's something you can always be proud of. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, part yeah. of that. Yeah. My wife hates polishing them trophies. Only two of them, but she still has to clean them. But, but yeah, man. <laughs> that's, that's pretty awesome, though. I should have brought my little – I have a bunch of those hero cards, and I just totally didn't think about it. I'm going to have to start bringing, bringing those and get you to sign them next sure. time. Yeah, absolutely. How about that. Yeah. Yes. You got to spin the wheel for our oh yeah spin the wheel today. All right, but during so that, I do want to yeah, give a shout out to a very special person that means a lot to me in my life. That's listening in tonight. She's like my second mom. Hello, Diane Brady. Much love to you. Glad you could make the show tonight, hon. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Hey, Diane. Good to meet you. Yeah. All right. All right. We're gonna spin the big wheel to see who our winner is tonight. And the winner is Blue. Blue is R.D. Ford. All right, R.D. Ford. Congratulations. Congratulations. Special thanks from Jersey Cape Yachts. Yes. Custom-built yachts. You bring in your plans for Jersey Cape Yachts. You sit down. You don't pick anything off the showroom floor. You sit down. You tell them your dream yacht. Even if you have an existing yacht, 
or a boat that you want to turn into a yacht. I'm mm -hmm. sure Jersey Cape could do that too. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Absolutely. Yes. So give them a call. Check them out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and their YouTube channel as well. And they got videos on there showing their uh, really how they do their customization and stuff. Yeah, and they have a mobile service unit too. So if you have a problem with your yacht, they can send that out to help you. Hmm. How about that? Very cool. So we'll, we'll get your prize in the mail, RD. So what you need to do, though, is go on my website, dhamiam.com, and this little window will pop up, and it'll ask you for your – just to click on that, and it'll ask you for your email address, and then put your uh, mailing address in the message box. And I will get your prize out to you. And you can also find me on Instagram, Twitter, all those things at dhamiam as well. But all the links are on my website to that. And uh, check out Kevin LePage on Facebook and keep up with his golfing career. It sounds like he's gonna he's a pro golfer. <laughs> and uh, so maybe we shouldn't take him to top golf with us, but that's okay. We're we're not hey, we so, can learn, we can learn yes. watching his swing, yeah. not each of so, ours. <laughs> yeah. Well what we could do is uh, so our the top golf thing, you know, you got different things set up, different kind of games. We didn't get yeah. into all that. Because yeah. I was messing up because I was hitting it too far, but that really wasn't helping me in the points. Well, that's because you're just hitting it so fast. <laughs> and I and I'm I was trying to slow my swing down, you know. Well, you can help me with that. I'm there sure. you go. Yeah. There so, you go. <laughs> But anyway, thank y'all so much for tuning in. See if there's any uh, final words here. Scott Trevison says, "Woohoo!" That's uh, cheers to you, Scott, down there in Florida, and I hope you're having a good time down there. Thanks to Jersey Cape Yachts, he says. And Dickie Dennis says, "Come to Virginia and check out the Highlands." Uh, thanks for sharing the memories, Kevin. You're welcome, guys. And it's a pleasure. Our, yeah, already for not a problem. So, <laughs> for my Michigan thing earlier. So yeah, thanks y'all for tuning in. There was one more person I wanted to meet. Oh, Dan, Danny Galetta. I don't think we said hey to... That's Bob's uh, girlfriend. That's, oh. That's uh, the sister to uh, Janine and okay. sister-in-law to Wayne. The, Wayne's the big dog at oh, Jersey yeah, Cape. Oh, yeah, the Yachts. big dog yeah. at Jersey Cape. <laughs> yes. And uh, Janet Trevis is down there in Florida as well. I hope uh, you're probably enjoying that sunshine. I miss it. I'm going to have to come down there and see you all real soon. All right, but thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And we'll see you all next Monday evening. Cliff Champion's going to be in with me. You know Cliff Champion? Oh, yes. Yep. So you're, but you're also welcome to come back anytime. Okay. Come All back, right. bring your friends, hang out with us. Well, if I won the B flight this year, I'll come back and see you guys. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. We'll do that. That sounds good. All right. Thanks, y'all, for tuning in. We'll see y'all next week.